made it to China Studio. Yes, China Studio. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome to China Studio. My name is Chen Wei Chen. Um, I'm principal with New York City Ballet, and this is Giovanni Berlin. Hi, I'm Giovanni. I'm also principal with New York City Ballet. Yeah, uh, welcome. Finally, Thank you. Yes, after finally. a year, literally a year of up, I arrived here in New York. We have been talking about this that a lot of students have been asking me what's the difference between between Balanchine and Bogdanova. And today we're gonna answer all of your questions in one. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes. <laughs> so not all of the questions, but a lot of the questions. A lot of questions. <laughs> yes. And also like with our perspective of we train Bagonova yes. in, in the beginning and then transfer to a Balanchine world. And I think there's a lot of interesting things to share. So tune in. Yes. Okay, so let's start with first question. So the first question is, how did you get into the Balanchine world? Uh, well, I got a scholarship for the Miami City Ballet School and like Chan, I was trained in Vaganova, so it was like uh, a whole new world that was presented to me. A whole started. new world! <laughs> <laughs> and also like as a PSA, just that this is like based on like my experience and like the teachers that I've had throughout the years uh, that taught me the balancing style and technique. And you know, it's like from my perspective, and you can see that even between like Balanchine dancers that they were dancing with Balanchine when he was alive, there's some discrepancies. So some people might be watching me like, mm, that's not how I learned it, but this is how I learned it. And same for Vaganova. I'm sure that you and I, you know, we're both trained Vaganova, but there might be some differences or things that we remember differently. So, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting when you say, even in Vaganova only, I have turned very, uh, so many different ways that from one teacher, he asked me to turn one day my passe here uh -huh. as high as possible so that I could have my center better. And then another day, he asked me to do a passe turn like this so it looks better with the passe. So, but I cannot turn anyway. So it, it was a struggle. <laughs> um, and now there's a, we have to take off from like a straight leg. Okay, yeah, I we'll, guess this is the yeah. very obvious sample of what's the difference between Balanchine and Vagonova. Yeah. And so, Let's go ahead and I think we can talk about, I think I can demonstrate some of the Vagonova. Yeah, like, and I guess I can do the balance sheet Yeah, we can like compare. So. Should we start from the bar? Yeah, let's start the bar. Okay. Okay, welcome to the bar. Welcome to the bar. The and bar starts with plies. Exactly. So plie, I guess most of the stuff you talk about during your interview, you talk about how... The heels. The heels, yeah. yeah. Two things I think about the plies. Uh, and also, this is like sometimes a misconception, you know, that, you know, if I got a bug, yeah. we learn, right? Where heels are always on the ground. Always on the ground. Always on the ground when you do a plie. And even the weight, like the weight distributed through the entire foot. Like we don't want to lift the heel up at all. Yeah. Like, right? This is our fullest demi point. Yeah. And once we start to come up, that's not demi uh, plie anymore. So this is demi point. Yeah. Demi plie. Yeah. And then after that, you go to a ground plane. <laughs> and in balancing, how I learned is that when you get to your limit, it's okay if your heels come off the floor. You don't lift them, but if you go down and you don't have any more plie to go, it's okay that they come off the floor, like in every position. And even if it, you know, that's my limit. If I want to go a little deeper, and also with the, uh, the, the, oh my God, I'm gonna cut that part. <laughs> We are not going to cut. You can think about it. So okay. actually, even in Bagonova, the reason I think Balanchine is so smart about lifting, lift up the heel, like from a double foot, after we jump, we land. There's an actual room if we lift up the heel. Yeah, in order to, more. in order to land it softly. Otherwise, you'd be like you don't want to jump in any double foot or like a. Yeah, in the end of the turns. And also the intention of the plie, because when I learned Vaganova, it was always like, you know, plie and come up. And with the balancing, I've learned to do a plie a little more active coming up. So like plie and up. Okay, that's plie and up. <laughs> and even like I had never done a ground plie in, in like two counts. And here I had to do it like, I remember in class having to do like ground plie. You know, it was always. I died. Yeah, so it's a, it's a difference. It's just about the. I guess the precision of it. Yeah. We are not in high altitude anymore. Why are you out of breath? Oh. <laughs> I'm always out of breath. It's hard to do steps and talk at the same time. <laughs> I think you said perfect. This one, please. Okay. Okay, Tandu. Okay, so Tandu usually, um, 
you know, I really enjoy the Jimmy point, two point, and even come back, I do enjoy the whole journey of using my every single bow. Mm -hmm. Versus balance sheet. Yeah, like how I learned, your foot is already active even when you're just standing in first position. So you don't go through the demi point like brushing or foot. You, you don't, right? You don't do. Or you don't. That's how I learned. Well, sometimes you know some choreography you ask for it, but how you learn it in class from my teachers is that it's already active and you kind of point from this. So it's almost like, of course, you don't want to do this, but it's this motion rather than this motion. You do want to have that, especially like coming down, coming down from a jump. But it's just that your foot is always active, even like. Your first position, you go already with the foot that it's like pointing actively from the beginning instead of you know relaxing and then going all the way. Wow. So it just I think it makes it for like quicker, you know, footwork. It's um, also a lesson for me. It's a lesson for Chan, I guess. Yeah, nobody told <laughs> uh, me about it. And also, I mean, I think that this goes for like both for every balance, I think, like also because I remember a little bit of the Vaganova that it wasn't really instilled in me, this thing about like staying fit, that like the leg would go out a little bit, yeah. but I, you know, here we are really, you know, mindful that fit here is also where your tanju is. The tanju is not here, the tanju is cross. Yeah. You know, and back the same thing, you know, like your legs escape, you know, it stays, you know. They stay you, in the line. Yeah, you're always in your fit. Even if you're a passe, it's a fit if you think about it. So, wow. yeah, and I, when I, when think about why the reason Balanchin uh, want us to like already act active with the toes because I think during the it really help our jump. Whenever we jump, we don't go through Jimmy point and point. It's more like from here already jumping. So that's why I think most of the dancers who train Balanchin, it's more like we can move faster because yeah, the already, forward, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, it's already it's already awake. You don't have to like. You're not just like standing here, like you're active, you know, the fifth position, every position is already active. Yeah. Cool. So next, what's next? Jete will be the same. Yeah, Jete is a little bit of the same, you know, it's, but it's the same thing about active of the tongue too. It's already active, you know. Same thing from the round. You know, you just like yeah. go for it. Well, the round de jean, I do uh, remember more when we do the doubles, that you know, sometimes, you know, we're doing round de jean. Oh, so fast. Yeah, like, but I want to show like in diagonal because then you can see better, I think. Then, you know, when you do a round de jean, you want to go fully, you know, front, side, and back. But when you're doing these doubles, you don't have to necessarily do this. I can't. You're like more to the side. So you're keeping, you know, thinking more that you're rotating to the side rather than the whole thing. So that was one. Um, Very good to know. Because yeah. I have never done that, the side round. Like when I do, I probably not, I don't know, it's just uh, Chung Wei Chen's version. <laughs> yeah, when, when, like, Chung Wei like, technique. It's front, front, that bow in the front. Oh, I, I think know. that looks like more like choreography than specific. I know, it's more like post toast. Yeah, well, but, yeah, yeah, that is something else, but I think for the round de you know, it should be that. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, yeah, but I think for the, for the round de that's like the main difference that I remember that I have learned. No? Yeah, and Fong Du is a really the one that stick in my mind because during my audition with New York City Ballet, I Randy Willem, she was telling me that, um, you know, usually I do Fong Du from here, uh, could appear, mm -hmm. directly to there, and, and I'm trying to straight at the same time, like, without doing anything. And yeah, they arrive at the same time. Yes, and versus Balanchin's version. Yeah, how I learned, you know, it's like from the... The coup de pied, you present it. So you go up to close, to open, up to close, to open. So it's not, you know, direct, like that arrives at the same time. There's you a little present. bit of like, Yeah, it's you were presenting with the foot, but there's almost like a breath, you know? Yeah. It's like, if I'd like to think, you know? Yeah, but it's kind of like present and present rather than yeah. Right. Direct. When he was like, when yeah. I was like, since you are all the way from Houston, why don't you just <laughs> extra learn, learn the right way? Yeah. But you know, like, Wait, I was true. right way, balancing, balancing way. It's, <laughs> not, it's not necessarily the right way. Yeah. You know, they're all valid, but it's like we're in a company that now, yeah, this is how we move. But it, like, we were both trained a certain way, and you know, it takes years to undo that, or even like learn something new. Was totally our body so used to it, you know? But it's just more of like, it's. Dead. Yeah, and it's like an intention. It's not necessarily that like, no, 
You don't have to create anything, it's just like an intention yep. of doing it that way. So that's like the main thing. Should we move on to Frappe? Frappe. Frappe yes. also very interesting. So a lot of time I do if I, I'm doing the flex and point block frappe, I will go through Jimmy Point to do that. Go through Jimmy Point just like how I do tongue do. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I do the tay as well. Is that hard to learn frappes though? Because I learned like always pointed, I never flex. Yeah, we do flex. Oh, yeah, okay. we have, so we have two. But I feel like that's more like royal, no? Like the English, I don't know. It's true, I guess. But see, I think we're both Vaganova and, and we like. And we are fighting about I always it. point it. Yeah. When I was learning Vaganova, it was always pointed. And then with the Balochi version, I have seen people have done here and they already point the toes. Yeah. So, well, what see, do you think? Discrepancy. From, I mean, I haven't uh, oh, mastered it in my body, it but from what I know, it's not flexed. Then it's from the surlico de pie, when you want to go out, you're going to brush just your toes. Oh, wow. Just the toes are brushing. So, you never flex? You never flex. From what I learned, you never flex. Like when you do, let's say, like a double, you're out, you do surlico de pie, surlico de pie, just the toes. But it's I don't have the coordination, so this ends up happening to me, you know. But from what I learned, you know, it's yeah, it's look at the a bit, just the toes, just the toes. It's interesting. So, like, why are we doing flags uh, for Vaganova? Do you know? For Vaganova, I've never. I don't think that's a thing, to be honest. I think that's because, someone that taught you. Do you think because this? Yeah, but I get, I don't know, honestly. Okay, well, I that's never a mystery. Learned, yeah, that's not a mystery. I'm sure someone has the answer <laughs> and just find it. If you know the answer, yeah. please comment below. <laughs> but I do remember, yeah, learning Vaganova always pointing and then the balance sheet is just the toes. Cool, but that's, yeah. Some people are probably gonna have different answers. That's, I already had different answers. Okay, so, what's next? Adagio, I guess. Adagio is Do you know, see, he doesn't even know the difference. <laughs> So, so as if you're gonna do a double very slow. No, no, but if you're gonna do a double up front wall, but that you did balance sheet. Oh, true, okay, true. See, you are now, it's already. I already like, like very trained balance sheet now. So, um, for Vagata, what's that type of thing for what we do here? Yeah. Once so you go to Kudepia and, and then go for up. Yeah, versus balance sheet version. Yeah, you go to, to the sort of Kudepia, so you would start with the, you know, and the toe started. You go through sort of Kudepia, and then as you start going you, up, yeah, you wrap then your you ankle. start going. To the front to double bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, so just to the front and to the side would be the difference because to the back is the same thing. You know? And toes always starting. Uh, yeah, so th that's like the main difference that you do. Do the front a bit up and then to double bit whatever direction you're yes. in. Uh, so that's like the main difference. And I think like we always learn to like lead, you know, pick up your knee uh -huh. and then. That's, the same. That's, That's the, same. the same, right? And then for attitude, there's a difference too. Oh, attitude, I think um, my teacher was telling me that when we do, um, I'm still doing balances. Yeah. Uh, as long as possible for yeah. attitude. So it looks long. Yeah. Yeah, I remember learning like Vaganova that my, to simplify, my teacher used to say it's kind of like you're in a kudupie, but it's out. Yeah. So it's kind of you just pick it up. Wow, and for balance sheet, well, how I learned is that it's actually a passive. Passive. It's shorter, you know, it's like a little more compacting. And then, yeah, right, it's cool, it's a good cool way to leg. think about it, you know, that here, you know, you're, you have this whole length of leg, and here's just a little... Same as at front attitude, right? Front attitude also, you know, I think in the Vaganov we always want to like turn out as much as we can, you mm -hmm. know, just like keep the foot the out, I don't have that turn out. And here we, you know, can pick up the knee a little more, and have the knee higher for the attitude, attitude front. Okay, so what about would be the same? Yeah, it's like, yeah, and then all the things, I think the main difference also for me, it's always been like the musicality, that I feel like for, when I was in school, I learned everything like very even. Yeah. And for Balanchine, we play so much with the musicality, like sometimes we do like tendu out, and, and, and tendu out, and, and, or yeah. like something, and, 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 and out. Yeah. Like with everything. Yep. Like even Adagio, I never did a fast Adagio until I started, you know, like it was always like Adagio was like this whole big thing, like here sometimes you do the open one count and close, you know? Yeah, so actually I think in most of Balanchine's class, we only do fast Dakota, 
we never need to hold there for four counts. Yeah, maybe when you're learning, because I guess we were in the school, like I'm sure. I guess that yeah. when you're learning, you have you to hold it. build that strength. But, but once we now, become like professional yeah. performers, we don't have to hold it oh too straight that way. And we, we forgot about an important thing: the, the head. Yes, the head work. In the bar, the whole bar, I got a correction from our director too. Like usually, if I go to bar, we do as much as they come out. Yeah. As Possible, and so whenever I do front, I look at side. Mm -hmm. Whenever yeah, I do a little back, when I do side, side leg, look at front, look at back. Either look at side or hand or a little bit to the front. Mm -hmm. And versus uh, yeah, yeah balancing. We're always working on with your head front. So the the where your leg is at, the head is always front. So like this, I actually learned recently. It's for you to uh, focus. focus more. Yeah, like on your what your legs are doing. And to not twist your body so you're turning out equally from both legs. Yeah. So sometimes when you turn, you end up like twisting other things. So it's just to kind of like isolate, and you know your head is forward, um, facing forward, and your neck is also a little, you know, you're never to the back, you're always like a little more twist forward. Right. Yeah, yeah so, so that's a, like that's the a whole difference. Part. Let's talk about center. Yeah, let's move to center. In the center, since you know in Maganova we already doing a lot of Yuma, I think but the main main thing that we always look at where our head is. Um, and that's that's Maganova. Yeah, I think of course all the things like from bar carries, you know, the, the plie, how the tongues go, like all these things come. But I think there is something very special about like balancing like the palm on. You know, I don't know, I learned a little more, you know, to I actually now at that has been erased from my body. I don't even know like what I was thinking of when I did um Avagana by Palma, but from the balance sheet, there's a little more of the twist. And I remember like learning about this cheek, you know, that before I just thought about turning my head. And with the balance sheet, we think a little more of like you're trying to show this cheek the opposite. You know, if you're doing here, you're trying to show this side of your side of your face. Um and one thing that it's, you know, for bar two that we learned, it's a lot about the fluidity of the portabra and the fingers, expressive fingers. It's like, you know, you you have five fingers, so you show all of them. You never, you know, tense your hands in any way or like hide fingers, have your thumbs to, thumb to your middle finger. You know, you want to show, definitely have, you know, all of them in a relaxed and a curved way, not, you know, that, definitely not, it's not a claw. So that's a more specific understanding for people. Yeah, it does get a change, you know. I guess a lot of people thought of balance is a lot of fingers. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like you see more fingers than you would see, you know. And like um, in Bakanova, I think I remember my teacher was telling me to draw a hand that you would think mm -hmm. that is. And yes, we do show all our fingers, but only the tips of our fingers. It's not the whole finger. Yeah, here it's just a little more, you know. It's like God gave you five fingers, show all of them. <laughs> and, uh, and then it's just a little more um, very religious fluid of that. Well, this is the, you know, Balanchine was a very religious man. He talked about God a lot. So I'm using really? his quote, yes. Okay. Yeah, Amazing. so using his quote. And um, yeah, so the thing about the Tacoma and also the crossing of the arms, you know, like. Of course, we have our first position, they go to second position. But if you're doing, you know, something uh, from the croze, it's okay, you know, cross your wrist and have a little more of like expressiveness, you know, when you come through, you're doing something, you know, it's just a little more rather than dum, 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 dum. It's just a yeah. little more fluid. And yeah, I, the I remember ground. when I was in school in China, they keep telling, my teacher keep telling me every time I should go through a perfect second position that's called clean but actually now I'm dancing a little bit more because since I'm, I'm yeah. in a balancing company yeah. so it's more like you yeah. know from the biggest to the smallest to the biggest yes. so that way you actually could show all of your possibility of the movement. yeah there's just like a fluidity like a continuation yeah um, and I guess we can talk about turns now maybe yeah I think it's a for everyone Okay, so yeah. here we go. Now, if you have been waiting for the turn, we are not going to turn for you. Because if you want to see the, how you're going to turn, you can check, them out, check out my other video that I already talked about the turns. Mm -hmm. But for the balance sheet, we don't turn a lot just because we try to be musical. So I'm very happy I'm here. 
Um, okay, so in Bagalaba, we turn in fourth position. And of course, we don't want our weight, our hip on the center center because it's very hard from here to push to your supporting leg. So we also stay a little bit on your supporting leg, but make sure that both legs are expanded. Mm -hmm. In a fourth position. And you open it, and you also in the fourth position with your arm, and you open it and close it to turn. And then one, two. Yeah. One more time. And if you I spot do where you're facing. Exactly, you spot the diagonal. the diagonal. You're spotting the diagonal. Oh my god, that's so bad. Huh? <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> we didn't take class, guys. We're showing you things. Um, I learned how to turn like that. So <laughs> the same thing, like if you're facing front, you're going to spot front. If you're facing here, you're going to spot here. And I guess like same for chins. If you're doing to the diagonal, the vagana, but you keep spotting where you're going. Yes. For the balance sheet, this was like, one of the coolest things to learn, I think, and one of the biggest challenges for people that weren't trained this way, it's about the spotting and how you start your right. First of all, you're in a big fourth position, like the biggest that you can be with a straight leg in the back and your weight needs to be fully on your front leg. So you should almost be able to lift your back leg. That's how far your weight is to the front. And from that, you're also, you don't start in a round position. You start in a long position. And from this, so you have a straight leg, weight is in the front, allonge it, when next thing, the arm's coming in, the arm doesn't go out to come in. From here, if you're facing me to the front, my arm is simply gonna come in. Yeah, as if, if there was someone next to me, my arm wouldn't even hit them, because it's just coming to my first position. And then it comes again to that thing about crossing the arms, you know, it's okay to let them cross, you know, naturally, you don't have to like do this. Definitely not, but they you know, naturally cross. And the spotting. Even if you're in the diagonal, when you go to turn, you can spot to the front. Yes. So if you're here, you can spot to the front and finish in a big point. So from here, let's see if I can see. <laughs> wow. Okay, so, you know, I, that was great. That, did you even know that? <laughs> I did not. You know, I know that, but. For me, I've been practicing the turn for a long time, and it's barely getting through the four turns. Let's cut that. <laughs> no, I've seen you do four turns. On yes, stage. I have done five to six, maybe sometimes seven. Almost. Not here. Not here. <laughs> um, well, it it will take me longer time to if I change the spot now. But I, I what I have adapt is the big four. Yeah. Um, and but I still I kind of straight leg, but I still like spot there. That way, I could do. <laughs> okay, one more time. Okay, good enough. So yeah, but of course, like you know, oh, yeah. so these are all things that like it's an intention. You know, you should aim to do this. But naturally, you know, when you go to take off, your knee gives a little. It's not gonna be like you know, fully. Yeah. It just it gives a little before it comes in. The same saying. with the arm, you know. If you're doing more turns, you end up you know you opening you a little bit. Little bit. There's a few um, uh, freedoms, I guess, in it. But if you want to be like classic, at least how I learned, you know, those are the things you need to think about. And also, Shenlei too. Yeah. If I do Shenlei, what kind of like it? It's there where you're going. And for the balance sheet, the head is going to be to the front. From so the Shenlei, I'm always starting in the front. And you know, even though you go to the side. Even though you're going to the side, it's like for PKs. Like, my head is still going to be to the front, even if I'm going out of it. You spot where you're going. Yes. And um, this also I learned recently, I just read an article, I think it was on Point or Dance Magazine, um, that it's about your connection with the public. You know, so it always feels like you're presenting yourself, you're not like steering away and becoming like almost in your own world, you still, you know, with the people that you're dancing for, like everything is like for them. Yeah. So yeah, in your chin as you keep, you know, you don't see just one side of your face. You're seeing your whole face from the front and same, you know, with the, all the pomas, you know. So very it's interesting. interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I guess there's another question from the audience that how do you enjoy Balanchin and Maganova? Like, what what are you expecting from the dancers? Like when I'm watching? When, when you, uh, yeah, when you're watching. Uh, well, I think there's, you know, like all these differences that we talked about in the, 
and the, the technique, the style itself, and they're both valuable. You know, I don't think like, it's not like, oh, one is right and the other one is wrong. They can definitely like add to each other. And even like most balancing dancers, uh, you know, from when he started the school and the company uh, were trained by Ghana, but they had Russian training. He just kind of like tweaked it. So I think when I go see it, uh, for when I personally, when I sit in the audience and I go see a classical ballet, like a classical company, Vaganova trained, I expect to see a little more of the um, story. There is a storyline most of the time in a lot of those. Acting, you mean? Acting, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly, acting. Um, and this like purity of movement and um, simplicity too, like in the way, you know, it's very rich, but it's always like, it's clean and it's pure. And with the balance sheet, I want to see there's a little bit more freedom. So I think the balance sheet for me, I feel like I have a little more freedom to be me in the movement. Mm -hmm. In the classical, sometimes I feel like it's more about like the characterization of what the piece is supposed to be. And in the balance sheet, you see a little more of the individual. And even with core work. Yeah, know, core work too. You see like these amazing companies and they have this like perfect like line of core the ballet dancers and they're all like perfectly aligned you don't see like one foot off the line in one arm and it's beautiful you know it's gorgeous and with a balance you see more of like a group of individuals yeah a lot of personality yeah and like yeah and yeah, more freedom you know of course you want to still want to be people to be behind people and in line but there's a little more of um yeah just like freedom so those are like the main differences for me yeah and i think um when i watch uh, balance right now it's more like um how much you could hit the notes and how how much understanding do you have for the music to play around it it doesn't have to be all, always one two three four it's sometimes one and two three like it's like something you could anticipate and yeah. syncopate the notes um, yeah the musicality is really yeah different. things that you want mm -hmm. and for the of course, now when I watch uh, Madonna about the full length ballet story, I really do went back to a zone that how I trained it, how how this step supposed to do it, mm -hmm. um, instead of like um, musicality. Yeah. And both is super fun, and there's no way right or wrong. And you could either use the way that how we um, analyzing the company or how we enjoyed another part, another style. We could like you know experimenting. Different, yeah. different style yeah. to watch. Um, yeah, yeah. they both like complement each other. You know, of course, art is subjective. Some people have, you know, oh, I would rather see classical ballet than balance sheet. Some people are the other. I personally love both. You know, I'm definitely more devoted to balance sheet and like that's the way I want to move and how I like it. But I still love when I get to watch our peers, you know, over the over the plaza, uh, American Ballet Theater. You know, I love watching the classicals. I love Giselle. I love Romeo and Juliet. I love Don Q, you know? Yeah. Uh, so they're both, you know, everything is, is valid. So yeah, uh, it's going back to as a dancer, like when, we dance, when I dance classical ballet, I focus on more the turns, um, the partnering, um, the space, how am I going to move, um, the high, how high I'm going to jump, um, versus in when I dance balancing or anything that performs here it's more like uh -huh. it's go, going back to the musicality again yeah. and we have to go with the music instead of like um always play catch like going behind the music like i want to dance with the music yeah like that's the most important thing it's like this famous phrase see the music hear the dance it's like balancing said if you were only watching the dancer with no music his body the way the dancers moving should be so musical that you would be able to imagine music. And if you also close your eyes and you listen to any score of his ballads, you should also be able to see the movement just by listening to the music. Yeah. So I think that's something that I try to embody. But and also like when I dance balancing like now, I I move bigger and even it's faster, but I still use um, my ability to move as big as possible. I yeah. It, it it's very interesting that the first couple of weeks when I was like um, having trouble and not sure if what I trained was nothing, but then it actually put me to another level in few, after a few weeks of biology training. Yeah. Like I move better, like go up as high as possible, go down, like 
what works yeah, it's just like more full almost like less proper you know uh -huh. like you want to go full even if you know you have those pure lines of course but i think there's just more of like it's more expensive and like less about like you know being perfect you know the little music box like ballerina it's more about and Definitely. they both complement each other but you, yeah i feel yeah. like i still try to focus of course there's like different priorities on both but you know they're both about you also want to see you know the biggest you know just cell moving you know like everything yeah like big but it's just the box where you can fit in is a little different and like when, when whenever i'm doing some of uh, the movement whenever i think i would say whenever i have a chance I would be as square as possible, but whenever I have, I have a chance to be as big, as deep, mm -hmm. as different, as special, as um, you know, as unique as possible. Individual, and I would do that. individual, like your way of moving. Yeah. So yeah, like with the Vaganova training, it really gave us the possibility of being like you know both different style yeah. and that gave um, us room and cho uh, choice to choose from. Yeah, which is very cool. Yeah. So I guess we covered as much as we think of today you know there's obviously a lot more and things that we haven't learned yet or maybe that we forgot that we learned uh, but yeah it was cool to share and I think for both of us to learn and like remember like our roots like how we first started learning yeah and also all these new things like for you a lot of stuff that maybe you didn't get to yeah and I have learned a lot of new material already yeah and even though I have been dancing here I just got promoted to principal but we never stop learning yeah. and also whenever we shift today it's our own knowledge and own opinion like perspective of like how we learn so we're yeah. looking forward to learning more and yeah I'm sure if we do another video like this in five years we'll have we'll more look back and be like oh now I feel different about that stuff yeah. and we'll have learned more so and if you have any anything that you would love to share please comment below and make sure you subscribe so you won't miss any of video from China Studio. Yes. Um, like and share. Yes. Um, please also have a look of our website. This website is, good, is very new and they have all the information there. And also there's something that I would love to share. It's Berlin Dancewear. Oh yeah, thanks would you? Yeah. <laughs> thanks Sean, I'm actually wearing and representing my own brand. Yeah, yes. and um, you could either go to this website to shop and mm -hmm. Again, uh, I want to thanks to all my patrons who has been supporting me. That's how this video is possible to be here. Um, otherwise, we'll see you next time. Next time, yeah. Thank you, Jojo. Thank you so much. Thanks, John.